I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn simple steps to read the values from a standard normal distribution table. The question here is how to read probabilities from this standard normal distribution table. We are given x as a random variable which follows normal distribution where the mean is 0 and standard deviation or the variance is 1. So that is your standard normal distribution, right? So it is, we don't have to normalize, it's already a normalized distribution. Now in this particular case, we need to find what is the probability when the z score is less than or equal to minus 1.24, what is the probability when the z is greater than or equal to minus 1.24 and what is the probability when the value of z is between 0 0.75 and 1. So let me change this to z. So we are not going to compli complicate this. Even if I write x since it is a normal distribution, I mean normalized 0 and 1, so x and z scores are kind of same, exactly same things, correct? So so that was also correct, but I didn't want to confuse you anyway. So, so whenever you have a distribution where mean is 0 and variance is 1, in that case, the normal distribution is a standard one, correct? We are going to use the tables. There are many types of tables as uh, you all are very familiar with. Uh, the one which we'll use will have values from the left side, right? So let's say this is a, let me just sketch a normal graph. Uh, okay, so let's sketch a normal graph here. Kind of distribution which will be like this, right? So, okay, this has to be asymptotic to horizontal. They never intersect and the mean is right at the center so we have mean and median at the same point and 50 percent probability on the each side so this that's the symmetry which we have so this happens to be at zero mean is at zero and this this point where the concavity changes that will be in this case one for us okay so this is this is one for us the standard deviation this is standard deviation of a okay now we are looking for z score to be less than minus 1.24 it really means that it is on the left side so all the numbers on the left side will be treated as negative so minus 1.24 will be somewhere on the left of this deviation right so so minus 1.24 will be kind of here let us say it is here okay so this point is minus 1.24 so probability will mean area under this curve is it okay so that is the area under the curve so that should be our answer so we can look into the tables which is standardized table here is the one so I've just printed out a sheet uh, you could see at the end of your book there will be standard tables given so you can read the value from there so it says standard normal distribution table values represent area to the left of z score right so so the z score is this for us that's the z score and to the left of z score so that is what my table is giving you right so direct value so it is minus 1.24 so we we go to one decimal place on the z column which is minus 1.2 right i hope you can see it's very small anyway so minus 1.2 and then 4 is this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4 and the value is 0.1 0749 so it is 0 0.10749 so 0 0.10749 i think right so let me check so it is minus 1.24 so 
So yes, 49. Okay, so that is the value which we get here. So that is the answer. This is a probability density graph. So the area gives you the probability, right? Now the other question part B is, what is the probability for this z score to be greater than minus 1.25 that means on this side now it is important to understand that we are using greater than equal to less than equal to now what is the probability let me add one here to make the point clear what is the probability for z score to be equal to minus 1.24 so whenever you're talking about a continuous graph and if you look into exact value the answer is zero do you understand so saying greater than equal to greater than is one and the same thing at that point exactly at that point the probability is zero since for this line the width is zero so the area will be zero okay now so don't get confused with less than equal to and thinking where will this 1.24 belong to right so remember that at a particular point for any continuous distribution probability will be zero that helps to understand right so now it's easy to answer the next question so it should be total area is one right so to the right side of this area should be one minus 0.10749 is it okay so that should be your answer so let's calculate this so it is one minus 0.10749 and that gives us a value of 0. Point, let me write down 0. 0.89251 correct so normally they are given to five decimal places you could always write to three or four decimal places anyway so this is what we get so that is kind of straightforward and now here's a slightly different question which says what is the probability for z-score being between two values? In this case, it is minus 0.75. So minus 0.75 will be like, if it is minus 1 here, so it will be kind of here. Let's write down this as minus 0 0.75 and then 1. So 1 is right there. Is that okay? So between these two. So now we are interested in finding the probability for the z-score between the given values so which is which is kind of here let's say this and then this first standard deviation right so this area now we are interested in this area how do we find that kind of a probability so it's definitely area under the probability distribution graph so what we will do here is that we'll find z score less than 1, z score less than this, and taking away, we find the difference. That is to say, it could be computed by finding probability for z score less than. So we'll avoid writing less than equal to, since you know as equal to, it is 0. So less than 1, right? So this much take away probability for z less than minus 0 0.75 that will be the inside portion of area which we are interested in correct so let's look into these two values positive values are on the other side of this printed sheet and for one the value is 0.84134 right so so we'll just write this as 0.84134 minus and for the negative 0.75 0 0.75 will be let's see this 0 0.7 and then then 5 is right there right so okay so let me put it straight i hope you can see it 0 0.7 and this is 5 0 0.22663 right so 0 0.22663 22663 their difference is the answer okay so let's use the calculator once again it says point eight four one three four take away point two two six six three equals to so we get zero point six one four seven one is it okay 
So that is what we get. Now, as you know, this is 61%, right? 61%. So you can say 61%. Now, as you know, it is estimated if you estimate this kind of ride because the area between the two standard deviations is around 68%. Is it okay? So this is, you are saying 61 point, let's say 5% rounded off, right? So this seems to be perfectly fine, right? Do you see that? So you can estimate your results also because sometimes you can, uh, you know, read from a different column that could make an error. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that helps you to understand very basics of how to read a normal distribution table. You can always share and subscribe my videos. We'll look into some more examples of similar kind. Thank you and all the best.